hour show number 402 is Taming of the Schmo, air date 92964. From Television City in Hollywood, the Red Skelton Hour. We're glad that you've opened your door and allowed us all to enter. We've brought entertainment galore. Watch it front row center. Relax, don't make a fuss. Just think of us like we are kid folks. Right now, you ought to know who's in our show once we begin, folks. Our guest star, Boris Evans. Introducing the Greenwood County Singers. I feel great tonight. Last night, I slept like a log. I woke up this morning in the fireplace. <laughs> you know where I've been? I've been, I've been? I stayed this summer down in, down in Palm Springs. I was down there for quite a while. You know, it's 115 degrees down there in the shade, but I'm smart. I stay out in the sun. <laughs> the other day, I was out with a pool, and Georgia came out, and she says, roll over. I'll put something on your back. I'll make you nice and brown. I said, what is it? She said, gravy. <laughs> hey, I was in England this summer, and... Uh, Oh, by the way, tonight we have the Rolling Stones on the show tonight. The Rolling Stones, that's Britain's number one singing rage. And we'll also have with us tonight Morris Evans, the great Shakespearean actor, you know. And that's what we're going to tell you about. While I was in London, see, I did a motion picture this summer. It was one of those Shakespearean things. And I got, <laughs> I play a king, see. I play a king. I got two words in the picture. Do it. See, the slaves don't work. And I say, do it. <laughs> Any idiot can handle this, huh? <laughs> All day I say, do it, do it. They don't get to me the next day. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> the third day they get to me, and I'm I get in front of the camera and I say, it do. <laughs> <laughs> and the producer and the director were mad, and I said, what are you mad at? I knew my part backwards. <laughs> hey, I gotta tell you another thing that happened. You know, over in Europe, when you have dinner in a restaurant, they serve you wine. You gotta buy wine when you eat. See, well, I don't drink. I'm not against drinking. I'm up against it. See. <laughs> Anyhow, they, they, they come around with this wine list, and it's not cheap, you know? So I said, I don't drink. Why should I order and leave it on the table? So I didn't order. So the guy comes over and he says, um, what do you have? And I says, uh, no wine. He says, no wine? I says, no, I don't drink. He says, why, this is an insult. Now, they actually got mad, see? So the next night, we go back to the same restaurant again. They're not even gonna give us the table, see? So uh, finally, they give us a table, and I says, um, I'll, I'll, I'll win this guy. I said, bring the wine list. So he comes over and I says, bring me some uh, Alaskan apricot wine. He says, <laughs> Alaskan apricot? We don't have any wine like that. I said, well, then forget it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next night we go in again, see, and we're standing there. I says, bring the wine list over. Now he's all smiles, see, and I said, boy, tonight's the night. What is today? He says, Friday. I says, against my religion, I can't drink. <laughs> Now it's Saturday, see, so I said, Little Red, we're going to eat tonight. Let's go back to the same place. She says, they hate you there now. I said, don't worry, we'll get in. So we cook up something, see. We get into the door, and I pretend I'm drunk. <laughs> and they're all smiles, the guy with his wine list and stuff. I walk over, and I sit down at the table, see, and he comes over, and he says, what are you going to have? My wife grabs the, the glass, turns it upside down, says, he's had enough. <laughs> Now, 
<laughs> you know, a lot of silly things happen in restaurants. I heard two Texans talking over, over in, in London. One of them says, uh, you're kind of a liberal fellow, aren't you? Do you believe in Buddha? The other guy says, no, I like margarine just as well. <laughs> Something. Restaurants, in restaurants, the waiters and stuff, they'll drive you nuts, you know. With me, it's not a driver, it's a short putt to begin with. <laughs> hey, talking about nuts. Hey, wait, give me, give me that thing. I'll get me a hat. There were two guys up at the funny farm. See? <laughs> That's what they call the asylum, the funny farm. <laughs> One of them says, uh, you know? <laughs> he says, we can get out of here. <laughs> the other guy says, uh, we can? <laughs> well, how do you suggest we go about this? <coughs> the guy says, mm, I have a big flashlight. Now, tonight we'll come out to the big wall, I'll throw the flashlight up, and you climb up the beam. think I'm nuts, don't you? <laughs> I know what you do. I get halfway up, you'd shut it off. <laughs> hey, I got, I got one for you, too. Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls. <laughs> the two seagulls. They're flying things. Did you hear what happened to Willie the duck? She says, no. What <laughs> Says, what happened to Willie the Duck? He says, he flew upside down and quacked up. <laughs> what is the choice of the male population when they go out on the top? We've got a clue to their first destination If you are tracking them down You'll never see them at any museum Or great operatic success What's the attraction that gets all the action? G-I-R-L-S
Fred Skelton and Morris Evans in The Taming of the Schmo. sleeping? Well, how do you like that? He's sleeping on a busted cot with his eyes open, and I'm a dang idiot. No wonder the older generation is losing the respect of us kindergarten dropouts. And speaking of dropouts, I better check the eggs. Clam, Clam Cadillhopper, Clam, if I ask you a stupid question, will you give me a stupid answer? If I put my mind to it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It do? <laughs> what is it, Paul? Cock a doodle doo! Just answer me one thing. Why yes. are you running around yelling cock a doodle doo? That's easy. I have to wake up everybody because the rooster has laryngitis. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. How can a rooster lose its voice? Well, we've got 50 hens and only one rooster. <laughs> Quite a strain on his vocal cords. <laughs> Going around all day saying, sorry, girls, I married. I just can't believe that that rooster has laryngitis. Oh, well, I'll prove it to you. Hey, Charlie, Charlie, get up, Charlie, get up. It's 5 a.m., daybreak. <coughs> well, well, son, there's only one thing to do. What's that? Southern fried chicken. Wait a minute, Paul, wait a minute. Spare that rooster. If somebody must go, take me. Oh, man. Clem, never talk like that to your Paul when he's got an accident. <laughs> oh, Paul. And it? Well, I wonder if the government has investigated that steel company yet. I still can't understand how that rooster got laryngitis. Well, maybe he ate a damp worm. <laughs> I'll cure his laryngitis, so I'll use some of my secret cough syrup. Secret? Yes. Did you say secret? A uh, secret, yes. Well, how secret? Well, I'm not going to tell you, because if I did, then it wouldn't be a secret. <laughs> Clem, since you were born, that's the first time you made sense. It's the first time? Well, you can't write them things, you know. Now, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, first thing I'll do is to blindfold myself. I must take this bandana. It's been split right down the middle there. That's a bandana split. <laughs> If you care for any of these jokes, just write in. I'll send them to you. <laughs> Clem, don't do that. You have to be an idiot all the time. Well, with my IQ, I'm kind of nailed down. <laughs> now, let's see. What goes into my secret ingredients for my cough syrup? First, I must have two gulps of uh, liquid cow horn. Two gulps? Gulp. What's a gulp? Gulp. Well, obviously, you've never studied chemistry. <laughs> There you are. Gloop. Gloop. <laughs> that is gulp. Go, go, go. Here, let me taste that first. Yes, sir. Man. <laughs> that is what I call cow horn. <laughs> now for a spoonful of the, uh, the uh, next ingredient, which is powdered goat beard. <laughs> powdered goat beard. Tell me, how does a goat's beard taste? Not bad. <laughs> but believe me, they're not making powdered goat's beard the way they used to. <laughs> now, so I can set the time on his cocky doodle doo, I must put in a pinch of this uh, mint alarm clock innard. <laughs> Come around Halloween and I'll mix you up a girl. <laughs>
For the pipeline. Here. Run this right over to the old rooster there. There, hold that in there for me, will you, Paul? Right. Here, open your mouth, Charlie. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. He drank every drop of it. Every drop of it. Okay, Charlie. Give her everything you've got. I don't want you going off half cocked. <laughs> Part your hair down the middle from the inside every time. Well, well, thank you, little hopper, you did it. I did what? You cured him. Yes. You'll make a fortune with that there stuff. Yeah, but where am I going to find a rich rooster with laryngitis? <laughs> no claim. If that there cough mixture can cure a rooster's laryngitis, it'll cure people. Yeah. yeah now, what you've got to do is you've got to get to the big city. You've got to get a job and make money and get yourself a patent. Well, well naturally, with, if you haven't got a patent, well, without a patent, you're not even pendant. <laughs> Ma'am, uh, do you know what a patent is? Do I know what a patent is? Now, that's the most ridiculous question to ask me. Of course I don't know what a patent is. <laughs> All right, son, I'll try to explain it to you. Yeah. Now, when you invent something, what's the first thing that happens? The Japanese put a transistor in it and sell it for less. <laughs> Maybe it's that possum burger I had for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like somebody coming. Well, it sure does. Good heavens, hide the secret formula. Good fellow. <laughs> it's Dracula, that's who it is. It's Dracula. <laughs> Here, don't let him bite you on the neck, Paul. Please. <laughs> I am the famous Shakespearean actor, Sir Neville Nibby. You're known in the legitimate theater as the Paul Anker of the Stratford-on-Avon set. Uh, howdy, howdy. W was that your car we heard? Yes, I was on my way to a performance and my motor suddenly died. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you're sure dressed for the funeral, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I simply must get to the next town. I'm playing Richard the Third. Well, you got plenty of time. Today's only the first. <laughs> Maybe. He did that. He did the that's too fast for a minute. <laughs> Sir, maybe, maybe my son Clem can help you. Yeah. Clem, yeah. look under his hood. Under the hood. Under the hood. <laughs> hey, the motor's missing. <laughs> you must have let the battery die, too. It's dark in there. <laughs> Your son uh, yeah. has an air of culture about him. Shh. Agriculture. <laughs> Clem, yeah. Clem, I meant the hood of his car. Oh. Now get it started. The hood or the car? They'll just get the hood started. The car will follow. Yeah. <laughs> get the hood started and the car will follow? It do. <laughs> Your son is uh, rather large for his brain. <laughs> Say, maybe you could give my son Clem a ride to the big city. You hmm. see, he's going to take out a patent. A patent? A patent on what? Instant idiocy. <laughs> you see, Clem's whipped up something that cures rooster laryngitis. You see, he's the Dr. Schweitzer of the barnyard set. I must have done something. Look, I knocked the steering wheel way over to that side. <laughs> Well, I said I could start it. I didn't say I could stop it. Hey, this is a nice old buggy, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> there's no headlights, no headlights. No headlights. Poor headlights. I knew him, Horatio. <laughs> Without doubt, you are the most inept, bumbling, clumsy, awkward clod I ever met. Well, congratulations, sir. You just won a prize. You're the one millionth person to tell me that. <laughs> and I hope the reward is that you never cross me path again. Hey, hey, your spotlight works. Look. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll bow every chance they get.
it's always a pleasure to have our most illustrious member, Sir Neville Nevish, back with us. Thank you, thank you. Sir, uh, as you may have noticed, uh, several of our members while you were on tour have passed on. And so I notice. When do you plan to bury them? <laughs> Your, uh, your opening in Romeo and Juliet tonight will, I'm sure, prove a memorable evening in the theatre, sir. Naturally. Your performance will doubtless send Richard Burton home crying. Yes, but look who he's going home crying to. <laughs> oh, a draft, a draft. I must protect my golden voice. No drafts. Absolutely no drafts. <laughs> I'm sorry about the window, sir, but you see, we've just hired a new uh, houseboy, and he hasn't quite learned all the rules yet. Uh, uh, let me show you the billiard room, sir. We ordered lunch over an hour ago. Wonder where that new boy is. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't read the house rules yet. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. It's only flat on the bottom. <laughs> oh, there's what caused it. The man I run over. Get ready, folks. Here it comes. <laughs> Get your pencil and paper ready, because this is another one I'll send to you if you want. <laughs> the fellow I ran over must have been Spike Jones. <laughs> Good. Uh, we get this. Uh, oh, good heavens! It's Our good you. plastic. It's you, you yes. no good, stupid, moronic car wrecker. Oh, it's good to have friends that remember you. Friend, I see your face every time I close my eyes. Well, you're lucky. I have to look at it with my eyes open. I don't know who sent you here on the day of my opening. Perhaps it was Jane Mansfield. She was always jealous of my acting. <laughs> now, will you? Voice cracked. It did? Well, so did the cup and saucer. No, I must maybe I get some glue. Keep your mouth closed. Nobody will notice the calm. I must be calm. Calm, calm. Before I lose my temper, I'll count to ten. Oh, don't flaunt your education at me, buddy. <laughs> I can count to ten, too, if somebody starts me off. Now, look. Leave me alone. Just chew your... Do your chores. <laughs> <laughs> you monster! You ignoramus! You stupid! One, two, three, four! Who's a stupid one, two, three, four? <laughs> Sir, I wouldn't write a thing like that on a fence. <laughs> I shall remove myself from you as far as possible yeah. and study my part. Oh, so <laughs> <clears throat> Somebody been putting dust in that thing. <laughs> there we are, there we are. <laughs> Any how you're playing with a loaded bishop. <laughs> is the East and Juliet is the son? Uh, Juliet is the son? That sounds more like a daughter. Wasted on the burning step. Wasted on the burning step. What do you say? Hey, say, you must be going to dance like an Indian, look like one. <laughs> Do something! Well, your feet you must be in and you're sending up small signals. My voice! What's my matter? voice? What's happened to my voice? It's gone! It's gone! Well, if you had it in your shoes, it's barbecued by now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on tonight. I'm ruined. Ruined. Oh. Death fair not, Sir Naval. <laughs> I shall I shall whip up a batch of my voice bringer backer. Does it work? Well, I did it from a rooster and brought back his cock-a-doodle-doo. What happens on the stage tonight if I go on and I cockle doodle doo? Well, I'll tell you one thing, you'll get a standing ovation from all those old hens in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> sound like a frog. Well, the chap who was going to send you the laryngitis cure, what happened to him? 
Everything I own. Well, we had better get here before the next act. <laughs> Romeo, is this your Romeo? <laughs> Well, let's face it, this just ain't your day, buddy. <laughs> First you get laryngitis, and now your bubblegum backfired. <laughs> is that, is that the laryngitis cure? Well, it ain't an eye waste for an elephant. <laughs> That's it, human being. I tried it on myself once. Ask the question. <laughs> There's an insult in there somewhere. I know one thing, one minute. On stage, one minute. Hadi, Hadi. Which one of us is one minute? <laughs> the rich. Give me the rich. All right, here you are. Now, whether you know it or not, that's acting. There ain't a thing in that bottle. Look at that. <laughs> help me, help me. I'll just touch my tongue to this concoction. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, what a long tongue he's got. <laughs> hey, let me have that. I, you poured the whole five gallons down my throat, you I idiot. had nothing to do with it. You tilted and zipped yourself. I've got my voice back. Yeah? You're a genius, a genius. Well, first I'm an idiot, now I'm a genius. You're um, not many of us around anymore. How can I ever thank you? Why, you little rascal, you little devil, you're a beetle. <laughs> Follow me, Ringo. <laughs> that never felt a wound. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east and... <laughs> it is the east and... <laughs> that mixture, you've ruined me. Yeah. Did you hear those hiccups? They're coming through clear of the bell. <laughs> how, how can I continue with hiccups? Don't worry, I can cure them. Here, all you gotta do is this. Don't! Remove thyself, pretty. Oh, does thou think I'm pretty? <laughs> <laughs> then thou should see thy cousin, Susie. Oh, Violet! Violet, oh, that's my second cousin. That is Susie's sister. There's <laughs> an audience out there. Is that what them people are? Now is my chance to do my imitation of Ed Sullivan. Oh. Out of him. I'll scare him out of him. Income tax. Brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the air in meet and stream so bright that birds would sing and pick it up. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I've a glove upon that hand. You, but I'd like to say a few words about Clem Cadiddle Hopper's cure for a rooster's laryngitis. Oh, <laughs> one dope of my medicine and your bird will go cock a doodle doo. Well, how can I crow like a roast rooster when I'm doing Shakespeare? I'll tell you what, we're going to make a great team, buddy. <laughs> you put the audience to sleep and I'll wake them up. <laughs> Hey, 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special kind of a treat for you. It's a preview of our London show that we shot in England this summer. A number by that sensational singing group, the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Wait till you see them. They make the Beatles look like they're wearing a crew cut. <laughs> Here they are, direct from London, the Rolling Stones singing, Tell Me. Now we'd like you to hear the latest recording of the Greenwood County Singers. It's not only their newest, but it's one of the hottest records on the market today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see how hot the record was while I was talking, it melted. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to let you hear them sing it in person. The Greenwood County Singers. <laughs> Frankie and Johnny were lovers. Oh, Lordy, how they could love. They swore they'd be true to each other, just as true as the stars above. He was her man, but he'd done her wrong. Johnny told Frankie one evening, I'm gonna get me a beer. She waited for hours and hours Till her heart was racked with fear He was her man But he was doing her wrong Frankie went down to the pool room Asked everyone in the place If they might have news of her Johnny While the tears ran down her face he was her man, but he'd done her wrong. That's when the bartender told her, You've got a reason to cry, Cause Johnny was here singing love songs To a gal named Nellie Bly. If he's your man, 
and he's done you wrong. Johnny was busy with Nellie, kissing and holding her tight. If he'd known that Frankie was watching, he'd have switched off every light. He was her man. She had to pay for her crime. The moral you find in her story is as old as father time. Don't trust a man or he'll do you wrong. <laughs> this tale we told you was forgotten for a while till the Greenwood County singers did it Hoot Nanny style The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton in Just Married.
Ray. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. <laughs> That's the real rice, not that stuff that they use at Elizabeth Taylor weddings. <laughs> With her, they use minute rice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Morris Evans. Morris, I want to thank you for being on our show tonight. Well, thank you, Red. Not only has it been great fun, but I think it was very apropos that we do Romeo and Juliet tonight. Oh? This being the, this year being the 600th anniversary of Shakespeare's birth. No, I thought it was the 400th. Yes, it was, but I'm sure that we just set him back a couple of hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for allowing us to visit with you. And remember that happiness is not a destination, it's a method of travel. So until next week, we'll say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. It's time now to lock up the store And to leave your friendly station Next week we'll be back at your door For another invitation so goodbye until the moment when we'll see you all again. To our friends near and far, fare thee well, au This is our game,